The Wasatch Mountain Club is a social organization that celebrates the great landscapes of Utah, like the mountains you see behind me. The group spent the last century fostering respect for Utah's natural wonders so everyone can enjoy nature's beauty. Utah's outdoor recreation industry attracts global visitors to experience the beauty of the state's national parks, monuments, and forests. Today, outdoor recreation generates $737 million in state and local tax revenues, and the industry contributes $3.9 billion in wages and salaries in Utah. Utah's outdoor recreation opportunities contribute to an unparalleled quality of life that attracts newcomers and keeps people close to the mountains and deserts they love. But the lure of Utah's great outdoors is hardly a new phenomenon. In fact, early sports and recreation enthusiasts created the Wasatch Mountain Club, incorporated in 1920. Intrepid club members with basic equipment pioneered the state's skiing industry. They explored iconic hikes and ventured into caves and rivers. 100 years later, their legacy of adventure was recognized at a ceremony at the Utah State Capitol. So in recognition of our 100th anniversary, the governor's office has prepared a congratulatory letter. I'd like to welcome Deputy Chief of Staff Mike Maurer, who will present and read the uh, proclamation. It is with great pleasure that I congratulate the Wasatch Mountain Club on the 100th anniversary of its founding. Over the course of its 100 years, the Wasatch Mountain Club has grown to become the oldest and the largest continuously operating outdoor recreation club in Utah with over 700 activities annually. In recognition of the Wasatch Mountain Club's 100th anniversary and its significant contributions to the state of Utah, the governor wishes to formally congratulate the club and its members, so please right now applaud yourselves. I was lucky to be born in Salt Lake City, okay? And uh, when you live with the mountains, if you have any adventure in your soul at all, you want to know what the hell is it up there? And uh, whether it's Lone Peak or whether it was, uh, it, it's an interesting experience to climb Mount Olympus, for instance, the first time. And of course, not only in this area, but in Utah, period. The scenery we have is so fantastic, you know, north, south, east, or west. Long before trail maps detailed the path to Angel's Landing in Zion National Park, members of the Wasatch Mountain Club were the very first to hike the iconic sandstone summit. Awestruck by the incredible formations in the Timpanogos Cave, Wasatch Mountain Club members encouraged the National Park Service to open the attraction so more people could hike the steep trail and enter the cavern. Some of the first people to share the story of Utah's greatest snow on earth were members of the Wasatch Mountain Club. With their wood skis and elk hide skins, they hiked peaks before chairlifts existed, then later operated one of the first ski toes in Utah at Brighton. Their love of powder gave rise to what would become Utah's booming ski industry. There wasn't much in the way of alpine skiing, per se. There were people that were skied around the mountains and toured around in the back country with the Wasatch Mountain Club. But in terms of masses of people skiing, there wasn't a whole lot of that going on. Well, uh, to understand skiing, you have to know that it was basically inaccessible during winter. There was no real major road going up uh, the canyon, let alone one that could be traversed in the winter time. Uh, so you, the only way you could get into it during the 1920s would be to uh, come in from Park City. So you would go in from uh, the mines in Park City, cross over Scott's Pass, get into Brighton, spend the night there. Next day you'd go up over Twin Lakes Pass to Alta and spend the night there. And uh, they did that. There were some fairly tough individuals that did these trips, primarily members of the Wasatch Mountain Club. 
This was a touring type of a thing. Uh, you didn't go up uh, and ski down and go up and ski down. Uh, the photographs I have of 1920 skiing rarely show a turn, let alone a linked turn. <laughs> the equipment was uh, very crude by today's standards. You had basically a toe strap and a heel strap, and that was about it. And the trip from the valley up here to Brighton was very long and arduous, and it was really difficult for them uh, and almost impossible for them to come up and back in one day. So they decided they needed to build a building where they could stay in overnight, and then that way could, they, could, they could enjoy themselves. In 1928, they thought that uh, they should build a lodge there. And so they started uh, putting together a lodge uh, for their members. Well, we're still working on it, actually. It's excellent. It's on the National Historic Register now as the place where, where skiing and recreation first became uh, popular in the Wasatch Mountains. That's what's amazing about the history of the club. All of the places that they hiked and, and snowshoed and skied, uh, all the peaks that they've, they've been at. I find it interesting that this canyon and up here by Brighton is where they chose to build the lodge. I think the minute you walk in the door, you can just see the character of the building. Uh, the windows are still original. We have people coming in, looking at the windows all the time, telling us how they would love to have these 90-year-old windows. The fireplace is made from granite that was, was mined around here. It's just got its own special little feeling when you're here and you're sitting in front of the fireplace. So again, just walk in and just look at the logs and look at the, the ceiling and the beams. It's, it's just amazing. Since 2010, the historic lodge has been under the care of a nonprofit group that's separate from the Wasatch Mountain Club. You know, these old buildings take, take money, and they, it was getting up in age, so they decided that it was best to spin it off into the, to the nonprofit. You just look at it and you just want to keep it going. I've been relatively successful, and I did have the opportunity to, do, to donate $50,000 to the preservation of the, of the lodge. Uh, that thing should, should stay there forever. Funding for This Is Utah is provided by the Willard L. Eccles Foundation, the Utah Office of Tourism, the George S. and Dolores Dory Eccles Foundation, the Lawrence T. and Janet T. D. Foundation, and the contributing members of PBS Utah. Thank you.